Every this time the quick speed shop, I've got all the fenders on the Model A hot rod shop truck. I've been driving it around, but I've got a problem. The tires rub on the fender braces real bad, so we're going to see if we can fix that right now. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to jack it up and show you what I mean. Bam, there we go, we got it up in the air. Yes, these are the death-defying uh, Harbor Freight jack stands, but um, luckily I'm not up in the air and I'm not gonna be underneath it too much, so I think they'll be all right for now, but I do need to send them in for the refund, for the uh, rebit, or what do you call it, the uh, recall. Right here, we got the fender brace here, and when it's hitting, it's hitting right up here over the tire. When I turn the wheel, let's see, I should be able to do it here like that. It hits the brace, which you can't really see right now, but the tire rubs. All right, on the passenger side, you can see the brace here. Let me try to get the light over. You can see where the paint has been rubbing, where it hit the uh, the grooves on the side of the tires. So it's definitely an issue. I think that's the only place it's hitting right now. These are 15 by 6 aluminum dish mags or Chrysler, uh, late 70s Chrysler dish mags or dish wheels. I'm not opposed to going to a narrower tire that will fit on the rim. These tires actually are, are kind of old and they're they also flat spotted when I was doing burnouts of this thing years ago at a hot rod party. With a line lock I dragged the front tires and it actually scuffed the tires and flat spotted them. So they actually have a flat spot here and another flat spot somewhere on it. So it, would, it probably would be a good idea to get new front tires just to get rid of the flat spots because they do shake a little bit on the road. I could go to a narrow rim. Usually when you see a Model 8, it's really slammed on the ground with fenders on it. They have like a 4-inch wide rim and like a, a 1, was it 155 or whatever series width tire, like a small, super narrow tire on a 4-inch rim, which would give you about that much contact patch, which would really help because it, it's rubbing out here on the on the thing. So if you had a real narrow wheel and tire, it'd help it. But I don't want to put change of wheels. That, that'd, that'd be easily... If I bought aluminum mag wheels, it would be, and two front tires, it would be like $1,000. I don't want to spend $1,000 on this truck now, and I, and I don't have $1,000 to spend on it. So I want to, I want to keep these wheels. I don't, I don't want to lose a bunch of the height in the tire because the thing is also super low to the ground, and I don't want it to be any lower to the ground than it already is, but i got to do something because it, it rubs real bad. There. All right, where are we? Here you see the wheel. I'm pretty sure these are 15 by 6. I think they say on them. Come here. I've got the, this is a super narrow rim. This is a 15 inch uh, diameter uh, Mustang Space Air Spare out of like a 95 or something Mustang. And it's got a 125-90R15 on it. So I'm just going to throw this up on and show you what I mean by having a lot narrower rim on here. If it'll fit, it should fit. Where's the studs? Bam. So, as you can see, that's a lot narrower tire. That'd be, that'd be too narrow. But it'd be the idea of using a lot narrower rim and using a lot narrower tire, obviously... The offset is super inboard on this thing right now, um, so if the if the rim, the if I put a narrow rim on, I'd have an offset where the tire would be over here. But there would be a ton more clearance when you went to turn it um, because the the tire would be 
a lot narrower. There, there's already a lot more room to the brace. And also it would clear the, the fender back over here a little bit. And it would also clear up here. This tire is also shorter than the tire I just took off. But that, that's what I'm talking about by putting a lot narrower, narrower rim on the front would help. Um, I just don't want to buy new rims like I said. But that would be one answer. Maybe I'll just run donut, donut spares on the front. That'll be my hot setup. No, don't do that. These things aren't rated for speed. I just want to get a rough idea of the backspace of this wheel. <clears throat> backspace is from the back of the, the wheel flange to the edge of the rim. And I've got a piece of tubing here, which is a little bit long. So let's set it up on here. I'm just going to guesstimate roughly because I don't want to cut this down just to do this, but get it kind of level here. All right, so that's four and a quarter. So I'm going to say that this is probably about, it's probably about three, three and seven eighths to four inch backspace on the wheel. Something like that. We'll go with about a four inch backspace right now. So the backspace is important when you're picking the wheel because it determines how much of the rim will be on the inside of the, uh, the face of the hub here. And like this wheel's got a lot of back space because it's a donut spare. The rim is almost out to the back and all the all the, the space on the inside. You can actually see it's not centered up in the fender. So it's not this wouldn't be a good wheel to run because it would look funny because it's not centered up in the fender well. Or the smaller width is what I'm looking for. It's got a section width probably about four and a half inches or so. The rim is probably a four inch wide rim, I would guess. 15 by 4. So the big wheels here, they the, with their 4 inch offset, the wheels are 15 by 6, so it's got a 2 inch offset on the outside and a 4 inch backspace on the inside for the 6 inch overall width. So that pretty much, these tires are almost centered up pretty good in the, in the wheel wall, so if I picked a new wheel, say I bought a new 15 by 5 wheel, I'd want to I think they come with a three and a half inch backspace on them, which would be which would put it, put it right where I want to have it in the wheel well. So if I do end up getting wheels, I know that I can get a 15 by five and a three and a half inch backspace. Got a Speedway catalog out here. It's from a couple years ago, but it's the Street Rod catalog. And in here they've got the Firestone F550 F560 Blackwall tire and a 165R15 is 25.43 inches tall with a 4.8 uh, inch tread width and it's just this pattern here it's like a uh, cheap little Firestone tire but it's like 80 bucks a piece and the tires that right now are on the front of the truck the 20570s they're about a 26 inch tall tire so you're you're only losing a half inch overall in the diameter of the tire so that wouldn't be bad it would just drop the front of the truck a quarter of an inch or so but it'd be a lot a lot uh, narrower with a 4.8 inch tread width bam check it out i bought those tires i was talking about these are firestone uh 165 5 r15s f560s they're a radial replacement for a 560-15 uh, bias ply tire. And uh, these have been tires that would have been run like on... Uh, there's a cord in the way. Hold on a second. This cord's Rochambeauing me. These are tires that have been like run on like little uh, British sports cars and stuff. As you can see, they're going to be a lot narrower. These tires are, I think, almost 8 inches wide. And these should be about... Uh, five inches wide when they're mounted up on the rim so let me cut these open and we'll take a look at them there we go radial firestone there we go right there you can see that bam so let's see what we got here max inflation 36 psi where are they made made in mexico hmm I like to buy U.S. made tires, but 
This is the only choice I got, I guess. Just hold this up for grins and giggles. It's gonna be right about like that. I think it's gonna look pretty, uh, look pretty good under there. Nice little tucked in narrow tire look on the front. It's gonna look pretty good. Nothing's more satisfying than tearing a sticker off a brand new tire. Ready? Here we go. Bam. Well, I got them mounted up. Check it out. They, uh, they end up fitting on the rims. These rims are a little over six inches wide. Um, some kind of weird oddball Chrysler size, but they, the tires fit on there good. And uh, it's going to turn out awesome. But I had a catastrophe. I'm going to be real here. Right here, see this yellow mark? I was putting the tire on the rim, and the rim's got a weird like step down inside here on the inside for the bead, and I didn't have the tire pushed down all the way around. I was using a rim clamp machine, and got the uh, tire stuck on the arm, and I went and it bent the bead piece and pretty much ruined the tire. There's a, there's a lump in the sidewall now, so pretty much ruined a brand new $91 tire. So I got to buy another one, but I went ahead and we wanted, we went ahead and we mounted this one up just to, uh, so I could put it on the truck and get the truck back down on the wheels. But I've got to order another one. That was a $91 mistake, but maybe I'll save this for a spare. I'll leave the marking on it and just have it for a spare tire for this thing or something like that. But that was kind of a bummer, but oh well. Keep Speedway in business, I guess, or Coker, or whoever makes these. But check this out. But it, it looks good here. I like how the tire is centered up in the fender. And when I turn it all the way to lock, I have a bunch more clearance to the fender brace. I can actually get my whole hand in between the fender brace and the tire, which before there was only like a quarter inch gap. And I'm still going to trim the fender brace back with a grinder to get some more clearance. But uh, these tires are the right the right choice. And I sacrificed like half an inch of tire height, but almost two inches of tire width. So that, that really helped out a lot. And they fit my rims, so I don't have to buy new rims now. So I'm pretty excited about that to keep my uh, existing rim package action. So I'm going to pop this off, get the grinder out, I'm going to grind these braces. And I'll bolt them up on here and set the truck down and see how they look. Okay, here's where the tire is hitting here in the fender brace. I went and I took it down. The thing is almost, I don't know, almost three quarters of an inch thick. I took it down probably half the distance up in here. So I'm going to put the tire on and we'll see what it looks like there. I don't want to make it too thin because this brace keeps the outside of the fender from flapping around over here. But all the, it's still full strength at the uh, headlight mount the headlight bar mount here and the shock mount and all that so that should be strong and I think it'll be all right holding the fender from flapping around but well, it's hard to see but up in there you can see now I've got about an inch and a half or so to the fender brace where it was about a quarter inch before so I think it's gonna be a lot better than it was I mean you run these things low they, they scrape once in a while here no matter what you're doing but driving straight down the road it's got a good, I don't know, two and a half inches of travel from the top of the tire to the brace up above. And honestly, when you're driving on most roads, you're only turning the wheel like like this far, you know, for most for following most roads. You're not doing the the real heavy turnings like in parking lots and stuff like that. Where if it's bumpy, I can go slow and uh, not hit out hit on anything. So I think that's a win these new smaller tires and trimming the braces. So I'm going to grind up the other side then we'll mount these tires up and set her down on the ground and get a look at what the stance looks like and in, uh, in all that. Bam, there we go. Got everything all painted up. The braces are painted up. The wheels are installed here. We got plenty of clearance on this thing. So uh, before I set it down, I got to do a little bit more work 
Um, I'm going to weld up the other side fender. Like you saw in the last video when I was doing the running boards, I widened the back tips of the fenders to meet the running boards. I'm going to do that while it's up in the air right quick. But I got one more trick. Hold on. Check this out. Bam! Aluminum diamond plate. Now, <clears throat> I went and I cut this out. I'm going to use this to skin the running boards. And you can see it's very shiny. I'm going to paint this black. But on the back side here, I'm going to take the grinder and I'm going to rough up these edges, both sides, and rough up the running board steel. And I'm going to get out my panel bond adhesive that I use to glue the roof skin on. And I'm going to glue these down to the running boards. The stuff's structural, so it should be fine. And uh, make the running board tops out of this diamond plate. It got super hot out today, like 90 and humid, and it got too humid to the door open. So I'm in here cooling down, so you got to deal with the fan. But I've got my aluminum diamond shred here, and what I want to do before I get ready to glue it down is I take and I wiped it all off with a brake clean, get any oil off it, and I'm going to take the grinder with a flat disc. So I'm going to stand it up on edge and use the real aggressive part, like kind of like where the hard backing is. I'm just going to rough up the, the last inside edge of this all the way around to give the, uh, the panel bond adhesive something good to bite into. So I'm doing that right now. bond here. I got the, uh, the panel ground for the driver's side. I also ground the framework here on the uh, the top so that's all cleaned up nice so everything's ready to go. And we're... I forgot that I didn't have the the application gun for this. I had borrowed it from a buddy but I was able to take this cock gun and stick a couple of bolts in here and it's able to push it through the, uh, the straw here and I've duct or electrical taped it to the thing so I made my own gun. That appears to work good. There we go, and just apply the adhesive like so. And I'm going to smush it out first before I go and applicate, put the aluminum on. I'm going to spread it out on here. Distributed evenly. When I mush the uh, the aluminum down, it'll mush it the rest of the way. But I want to get her flattened out first here. Make sure I got enough. I got the glue all spread around here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, slap this on here, like so. Just like that, bam. Gonna mush it around just a little bit. Kind of like gluing in your dentures. Just mush it around in the poly grip. And then uh, I got this steel here. I'm just going to clamp this down. This stuff's got a little bit of working time in a few minutes, so I'm going to clamp it clamp her down here, front and rear, and then I'm going to put some clamps on the side. Alright, bam, check it out, it's all clamped up. Now I'll let it sit for, uh, uh, I think, half an hour set time, and then 24 hours, I'll leave it sit overnight. But this ought to glue this on here good. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side, and, uh, let her set up. Alright, it's the next day. This thing has been uh, clamped up for about 12 hours. Yeah, the overflow glue is nice and hard. It takes about 24 hours for a full cure, but I can take the clamps off now to, because the set time is, is way, uh, way past set time. We'll get a look at it. Nice. 
check it out. This looks super boss. I love the rake of it. The tires fit the fenders really well. And I think it was the right choice to go with those narrow tires. And when I turn, I've got about two inches of clearance now to the fender braces. So plenty of room to drive this thing now. And I'm excited to be able to put out and put some miles on it now that i got the right size tires and start breaking it in, see how things work out on it. I've got a couple more things to do. i got to get some glass made for the back window and the side uh, vent windows and the doors. And then uh, finish making the uh, splash aprons for the running boards and clean this stuff up. But it's about 90 degrees out today. I'm sweating. I'm going to let this thing sit out here and bake in the sun, cure them running boards on, and uh, just get a look at it and see how it came out. So I really like it. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Hit the bell for alerts. Tell your friends. I'll see you right back here at the Quick Speed Shop. Finishing up the cool Model A Hot Rod Shop truck.